Hello friends, welcome to a new vlog. First of all, I want to thank you for your warm welcome to hear my voice again. Your kind comments mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. In my last vlog, I shared my weekend with you. Today, I invite you to spend a normal weekday with me and my girls. Many elements of my weekdays are the same, day in, day out. I love it. Routine is something that gives me a sense of calm and happiness. The older I get, the more I appreciate living at a slower pace. I'm past the rat race of constantly chasing better positions and promotions. My world is small now, but I'm so happy in it. Six years ago, when I started to change my life, I found a quote that perfectly describes my approach. The author of the quote is Lauren Miracle. And the quote is, I live in my own little world, but it's okay, they know me here. Back to my normal Thursday. After making coffee, I sit down and plan my day. Today, I have included in my plan to make a loaf of banana bread. We will talk about that later. When I have a plan for the day, I spend some time writing or reading. The best time is in the morning. Everything is quiet. This is the time for me that works like meditation time for other people. Before I take care of my house and pets, I make myself breakfast. Today is my new invention, omelette with grand almonds. For years, I have been making omelettes with flour and soy milk. Last week, I had an idea, why not just add grand almonds? The omelette you get is very nutritious. I serve it with grape and kiwi jam. I did not put yogurt on the omelette because I wanted to eat it with the banana bread. I was going to make after breakfast. This is a recipe for banana bread that I tried for the first time. It is super easy to make. Even if you are a person who doesn't know what to do in the kitchen, you will be able to make this banana bread with ease. I will leave the full recipe in the description box. Mixing the ingredients takes about 6 minutes. First, mash the bananas. Add the melted butter and mix well. Whisk the egg. Add the rest of the ingredients except the buttered bananas and mix well. Now, add the bananas and butter and mix until the dough is completely combined. My variation, I added half the butter to the bananas and half to the rest of the ingredients. It helped with the mixing. My baking tin is 30 cm by 12 cm. The height is 7 cm. 
I bake the bread for 60 minutes in a preheated oven at 175 degrees. This is the first time I have made this recipe. My tin is too big, so next time I will double the recipe. That way the bread will be taller and last longer. I will of course adjust the baking time. My guess is 60-65 minutes. I will let you know if I make this double recipe in the future. For now, if you want to make it, use a smaller tin than mine, unless you don't mind the bread being low. Ok, while the banana bread is in the oven, let's do the dishes and talk about eating habits. Some of you have asked me if I'm vegan. You have not seen me cooking meat, hence the assumption. Well, you see me eating eggs and that should put any thought of veganism to rest. But just to be clear, I'm not a vegan. The truth is that I do not like meat that much. I eat it from time to time, but if I can choose something else, I choose something else. So I eat a lot of eggs and tofu. I also add salmon to my meals 3-4 times a week. As for dairy products, everything has to be lactose free, as I'm lactose intolerant. I'm not allergic to lactose. They are two different things. If I had an allergy, I would not be able to eat lactose free dairy products. I'm lactose intolerant, which means I can eat teeny amounts of lactose. I don't know exactly how much but it's not a lot. If I eat half a cup of natural yogurt or cheese with lactose every day, I get sick after three days. All stomach related. I also have a skin rash. A rash can appear within 24-72 hours and this is why many people do not make the connection. They do not see anything immediately after eating, so many people are not aware that they are lactose intolerant. Anyway, all this means that I can eat dairy products with the lactose removed. But even though we say removed, there are still teeny amounts. My body can deal with these teeny amounts. Technically, the process of removing lactose consists of two stages. First, filtration to remove some lactose up to 40%. Second, adding the enzyme lactase to split the remaining lactose molecules into two separate molecules, glucose and galactose. If you see me using butter, yogurt or cream, these are lactose-free dairy products. As for cheese, I buy cheese alternatives made from coconut oil. My favorite is red cheddar. As for milk, most of the time I use unsweetened soy milk. Occasionally, I buy unsweetened rice milk. But for coffee and baking, I use soy milk. I hope this clarifies the issue. And maybe, helps some of you who are also lactose intolerant. This is how the girls spend their time when I'm busy. Watch Yuma's ears when she hears me open the door. I try to divide my attention equally between the girls. With three of them, if I pet them simultaneously, <laughs> I miss the third hand. If you have three or more pets, you know what I mean. And yes, cuddling is a daily routine.
When it's warmer, I let the girls in the garden and I vacuum the house. Having pets means I have to vacuum the house every day. Nala is a border terrier and she sheds very little fur. But with Yuma, it's the opposite. Yuma is a Jack Russell Dashwood mix. She has a thick coat and an even thicker white undercoat. She leaves her white undercoat all over. Aira is a Siberian cat. She has a long, three-layered, waterproof coat. It tangles easily, even with regular brushing, which Aira doesn't like. When Aira cleans her coat herself, she removes the tangles and leaves them wherever she sits. On her bed, on the sofa, on the floor. It's time for the girls to have their breakfast. They are always happy seeing me preparing their food, but there is something that happens from time to time. I used to have to feed Yuma by hand at every meal. Nowadays, this happens from time to time, and usually, after I give her some of her food, she continues to eat on her own. The reason for this is that she is a rescue dog, and sometimes she has tougher days. But that's okay, we deal with it when it happens. Remember that piece of wood? I'm still not sure what to do with it. One of you suggested using it as a tray to present food. I'm considering it as one of the possibilities. But before I use it, I will oil its surface with olive oil. I have read that vegetable oils are good for wood. Unfortunately, the bottle is almost empty, so I will repeat this process when I buy a new bottle of olive oil. The big surprise is that the wood is not greasy or sticky after applying the olive oil. In the meantime, the piece of wood will wait here for the next session. While everyone relaxes, it's time to try the banana bread. With coffee, of course. Usually at this point I do my workout, shower, get dressed, make coffee and start working. But today I will do that after eating the banana bread. The whole house smells like bananas. Who could resist and not to try it?
The banana bread is delicious. I added some of my favorite Greek style lactose free yogurt. Yes, I can recommend this recipe. Before I jump into the rest of my day, I want to show you how I clean my mocha. I know a lot of people do it the same way, but one of you said that my mocha looks very clean and would like to know what I do. First, I remove the coffee grounds and put them in the bin. Now, we all know that we are not allowed to use detergent inside the mocha. I clean the outside with a little detergent. I'm very careful when I wash it with water. When I clean the inside with water, I use my fingers to remove the oily layer of coffee residue that remains after making coffee. I do this after every use. Having said all that, there is something to bear in mind. This mocha has never been used on fire. I have had it for three years since I have an induction cooker. I'm going to show you my old mocha Bialetti. I have had it for about 11 years. For almost 8 of those years I used it on a stove, sometimes several times a day. For the last 3 years I have only used it on a small remote stove when I travel. Big difference, right? You may be a little surprised to see a clean and new looking filter and seal. The reason is that they are new. I bought them last year. Now I can continue to use my old mocha when I travel. I know it doesn't look as good as my new one, but I like it. The old mocha has a lot of good memories attached to it. The rest of the morning and most of the afternoon is work. Today it's editing, which means working at my desk at home. I took a break at 4 p.m. to take Nala and Yuma for a walk. They had been waiting all day. We took our routine walk through the old range. We like this place, even though it looks a bit scary.
after the walk, before I go back to work, for me, coffee and banana bread. For Nala and Yuma, snack time. As a bonus, Nala and Yuma got the last sips of my soy latte. Eira came to see if she could get some, but she doesn't drink coffee. She gets her snacks when Nala and Yuma are not in the room. This is what my weekdays look like when I work from home. Thank you for spending time with me and my girls. See you next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>